right. Very, very special guest is my nephew. You want to give uh, give everybody listening a, a um, uh, who you are, what you do, and uh, who you do it to? <laughs> the list is long. <laughs> yeah, the How about we just long. start with uh, uh, your name and your age, because I think that's going to be the focal point of today. That's the most important part. So my name is Jared Setzer. I'm 21. I'm about to be 22 mm-hmm. in March, in March, early March. Coming so. up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 22 is not really a, a special birthday. I don't. They're think. all special, man. They're all special. <laughs> How many businesses do you currently run? I currently and own. I've I've been through. Two so far, one that I started in high school, one that I was trying to work on following high school. Mm-hmm. I still do a little bit of business with it, but... What was the name of that? That's Top Tier Roof Cleaning. So what does that business do? So what we do in that business is, is pretty much exterior cleaning, pressure washing. The, the roofs for me was like the money maker. You know, mm-hmm. that was the one that you could upsell. Not, nobody wants to get on their roof. Yeah. But like the, the soft washings, like I said, that was that was a thing for that business that was like an, a niche. I don't think you're giving yourself enough credit because you started before that being an entrepreneur yeah well i, I started about year 2000 you hear that? <laughs> was, I, I, there wasn't an official start date it's it's on my birth certificate it's on your birth certificate right, entrepreneur. Yeah. jared setzer aka entrepreneur. entrepreneur yeah yeah so i think i think most people's perception whenever there is a young person who is um, starting their own business, and I'm using air quotes here, right? Yeah, starting yeah, their own yeah. business. I think the perception from older people is, oh, this little, how cute, this little yeah, kid, sure. you know, whatever, whatever. Your dad had told me, he's like, yeah, uh, Jared's got the trailer, the, the trailer tied up, um, you know, he's, he's, you know, mowing, whatever, whatever. And I was like, what do you mean? And he's like, yeah, he's taking that damn trailer and that mower all over town. Yeah, and he's full-time hit. work, I was man. like, Oh, <laughs> so yeah, this is not just my noble nephew. He's yeah, actually sure. hitting licks yeah. now. So, and I guess, was that, how old were you then? I mean, man, like I said, it was, it was kind of weird because I, because I've been an entrepreneur my entire life, anywhere where I can make a buck. Sure. You know, if I was 12 years old, mm-hmm. and the neighbor asked if I could cut the grass or if, you know, my mom's a school teacher. So, you know, we know a lot of people in, around town, or at least she knows a lot of people <laughs> around town. So, you know, like it, that was a, that was a good one for me. You mm-hmm. know, like it was people kind of knew. Yeah. He'll, he'll, he'll work. He'll yeah, do, he'll you got honeydew project. And that wasn't the only way, but right. That, that's just an example, right. Through my mom, you know, small things like that. And then as soon as I was able to drive, I mean, that, that's man, where it just went nuts. huh? There's money waiting at the customer's house. <laughs> you know, so. I'm going to say that you don't see money or wealth or a quote unquote paycheck like other people your age or even whenever you started back, yeah. when, you know, I don't want to tie entrepreneurship into money. Right. Yeah. But that's a, that's a definitely a good motivator. You know for what sure, I mean? For sure. You know, especially with you, I, you know, I, I, saw, I watched you growing up, you like just handled business differently. I don't mean like your business business. I just mean like your personal business. You know what I mean? Like when it came to wanting things or buying things, Oh, I want a kayak. I can go wheel and deal and get this this done and make this happen or whatever, whatever. Go get the kayak. In your peer group at your age, how many people would you say were like that? You know, that that's honestly a really good question. Um, uh, there was a lot. There was a large group of kids who, if they wanted a kayak, a kayak showed up at the house. <laughs> and then it, there's yeah, also driving fifty thousand dollar trucks to it, school. It's, yeah. yeah, for sure. And, and then there was also the gr- a large group of kids who wanted a kayak, but we're never going to get a kayak. They were going to go borrow their friends. <laughs> they were going to borrow their, borrow their friends, right? And they also were the kids who, you know, didn't think about it. These are the, Both groups of these kids were kids that didn't think about, oh, maybe, you know, maybe I should go cut some grass. Yeah. <laughs> and then get a, go buy a kayak, you know well, what I mean? So. Well, and that's fascinating to me. You have a want, whatever it is, you know, but you did. I mean, I, I know you asked your mom and dad for things, but, you know, when you were younger and stuff like that, but even like my son, he started buying his own clothes in high school when he was a freshman. Mm-hmm. And that was after he started making his own money. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like I I saw something just switch with, with my son. It's fascinating to me. Like I said, you, you, you're like, oh, I want X, whatever that is. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you knew what it was going to take for you to get that. Yeah, definitely. And it never included birthday money or exactly, that's yeah. you know if you use that that was gravy or whatever but it was just like you know oh i want this thing this is how i'm going to attain it yeah exactly and a lot of young people don't have that 
I used to really like to ride, like to ride bicycles, you know, at the time as a, as a kid. And I had the opportunity, I was given a bike or, or maybe it was my sister's old bike, something like that. Right. And all I know is this bike was purple. Right. But the frame was just all I needed, you know? So, <laughs> so of course, you know, I, I painted that bike and, and I got new tires for the bike. So, you know, it, I wanted, I wanted this bike and it wasn't just going to show up. Right. So I had to figure out how to, how I was going to make it show up. And yeah. this is something that isn't just represented in me. It's represented throughout my, our whole family. And that's that I wanted this. Why am I going to ask my parents that thing like a bicycle, right? To me as a kid, I'm like, yeah, I just go, just go. Why would I bother my dad yeah, ab- yeah. about the bike? I'll just go get the bike. The, the overarching question to this whole podcast is, are entrepreneurs made or are they born? Yeah. You know? And so, I mean, I think the obvious answer is both, but I think it's very different for everybody. You know what I mean? Oh, 100%. So, you know, some people get thrown into a situation and, they, and then they become an entrepreneur. Yeah. Some people, you know, that th- th- they start out really young and yeah. it's like, this is just what, this is what we're going to do. This is what I'm going to do. Do you think that this is something that you inherited or something that you were taught? So I think that I was, I inherited and I was blessed with being in scenarios where I could learn a lot from that scenario. Your dad's very proud of you. I'm proud of you. Your dad. Yeah. Talking to me like in awe of, he's, he's like, yeah, Jared's over there talking to somebody about buying their land and putting up a movie theater. (laughs) <laughs> and like they're serious they want to they want to know more yeah. you know they want to know more about this this venture and how you yeah. know he's like putting numbers together and everything i don't i don't know i don't i don't know what the right thing to say is but i don't think that's normal i i'm very very proud of you yeah and i'm very happy that you have that mindset yeah um but i definitely don't think that that's something in your peer group that is common yeah definitely i, I definitely don't think it's common for sure i think that there's People that are that had the ability to do a lot like this, but the world that we live in now seems to put like a barrier oh, to be able to access. Yeah. You know, there's there's right before you you can't. People don't have the confidence to to go after opportunities so, like that. You know. Here's another fun fact for those of you listening: my nephew, who I'm talking to right now, Jared, and his dad both, I would say, are borderline. Okay, okay. Uh, g- g- you better gamb- watch your mouth g- over there. <laughs> Gamblers Anonymous. Uh, uh, okay, we not need, did, we, not, we need to find did. a group. I know it, Jason. Yeah. I know it. Just say it. Say it how it is. Okay, not, we need to find a group. Not degenerate. Not degenerate gambler. Yeah. That's not, I wasn't going to go Drop it there. in the comments if but y'all you, have any AA groups for <laughs> gambling. You guys definitely are not scared to to, to drop a thousand bucks on a, on a whatever. Oh, yeah. So, I but love gambling. My, my thing with that is it's never took to me like it has y'all because... Yeah. Winning a thousand dollars feels nothing like losing a thousand dollars. Yeah, you've told me that before. You know what feels good, Jason? <laughs> What's that? Going and gambling that hard earned money you've you've made. You know, it's it's not all my money. It's the money, it's gambling money. It's 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 money set aside for gambling. Okay. You know what I mean? So going that it's a that Yeah, I mean some people rush, they play you know? video games. Hell yeah, that's so, expensive. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not disagreeing with you. <laughs> yeah, but it can get I, it can get expensive. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So yeah, uh, whenever it was, um, whenever it was decided that we were going to go to Vegas for okay. your 21st birthday, I said, "Well, this makes perfect sense." Oh yeah, you, you knew you knew there was a reason for sure. <laughs> your first business, and I'm using air quotes because yeah. I think this is the first business you actually incorporated. Yeah. Um, your first business was top tier roof cleaning, right? So I had a I had one LLC before then, and that was that was the SMP, yeah. With and so th- you had a partner on that, right? And so yeah, t- tell me, um, tell me a little bit about that. So you and your partner, y'all got uh, y'all got equipment, and y'all started doing uh, this cleaning business. That business for both of us, we, it was such an amazing growing opportunity for for our own individual businesses now, like or even businesses for the future. I think that you know we both pulled different things out of that business, and and in my opinion, and in all of my business endeavors up to this point in life, that's the most important thing to me. Right? I don't. I'm of course I'd love to see every one of my businesses like just flourish and sure. flower, you know, but. 
sometimes just things aren't meant to be, right? Things happen so that you could learn from them and, and grow to be able to develop what is planned in the future. You and he, at some point, decided to go separate ways. Yeah. Uh, he doubled down on uh, music. Dude, and- he didn't double down. He's like <laughs> f- fucking quadruple down. Yeah, he's he's all in. So, yeah. fair enough. Yeah. So, um, uh, you bought him out. Yeah. You acquired all the equipment that y'all had purchased between two of y'all. Mm-hmm. And you rebranded, is that right? Yeah, to I rebranded top to top tier, yeah. You know, we were always really kind of worried that, you know, something would go sideways yeah. and y'all have been lifelong friends. Yeah. And of course it just, it didn't happen. I mean, you guys, you, you managed to respect each other and come to an amicable agreement, yeah. whatever that was. It doesn't go that well for adults. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, 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 right. Um, I'm trying to, I'm trying to get used to it now, you know, while yeah. I'm young. get it out of the way. My age often was, um, hurdle. Yeah. Um, you know, there was a lot of times that people didn't take me serious. Yeah. Um, you know, like I said, when I was building metal buildings, once my age was out, uh, I was kind of, I needed a new crew mm-hmm. or I needed to move on. And that was just me being an employee. Yeah. Having your own business and you're soliciting work through, and we're going to get into that in a minute, uh, yeah. through these different avenues that you uh, had figured out. Yeah, yeah. Did you ever run into any resistance whenever you showed up with you or your helpers or whatever. Yeah. And it's these kids. There was definitely times, don't get me wrong. And, and whenever the true age came out, it was always like a shock factor. Right. But you know, like you said, luckily I was in the position where people thought I was a little bit older than I really was. And I don't know how in the hell they got that impression. You know, I didn't look like I was 25 at all. I was definitely 16. You know, people really didn't question me too much. And, and that was pretty nice. You know, like everybody really brought that up a lot. And, and I think too, right. I think most people, when they start having questions and then they're getting the answers. Yeah. I think that age will disappear. Yeah, definitely. Unless definitely. you're some old salty iron worker. But and I think that was it for sure, right? Like all the questions people had, like I typically typically had an answer, right? And 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 these weren't just things like, you know, I wouldn't just show up to people's houses and be like, well, you know, whatever they tell me, you know, I'll, I, I'll <laughs> respond. You know, yeah. like I actually like really I had to think about and prepare like what I was going to say, right? Like I'd sit in my truck mm-hmm. before pulling up to their houses, like okay, you know, like, what if they say this? Like, I'm, I, well, I'll say this. You, you know what I'm saying? So it was like, and and the trend that I noticed is when I did do that, I was a lot more prepared. Yep. And when I didn't do that, you know. Things kind of fell apart a little bit. Okay. You have this roof cleaning business, or you have this, what would you call it? Pressure washing business? Yeah, I mean, it was it was the, kind the of. Roof is in the name. That's yeah, why I always I mean, go back yeah, to roof. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, my business, top tier roof cleaning, the one that I started, the first business I started that was, you know, just by myself, that was after high school, you know, <laughs> like we discussed, you know, yep. Luke Luke started doing his own thing full time, and I needed something to do full time. What about college? It, well, I tried college. That wasn't going to work, right? So Your sister, yeah. she's, she's older than you. She yeah. was... Um, uh, at the time you graduated high school, how old she was? She was already in college, yeah, and she was already a couple years in. Right? Yeah, I think she's three three years older than me. So, yeah. so I think the expectation from oh, your yeah, family, your parents, was that you were going to go to college. Oh, yeah. She set the standard for sure. Whenever I decided, like this is what I'm going to do, it was like a, this is what I'm going to do, and there's like no. What made you rigid in your position? Yeah, it's a, you know? exactly. Yeah, it definitely made me rigid in my position from the standpoint of like. You know, I've already jumped off the cliff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, might as well try to fly. <laughs> I had a really hard time in school, period. Focus, everything else. I struggled to get passing grades. I was um, I was right there. I was battling with you. <laughs> so, interestingly, I read an article here not too long ago about how entrepreneurs, uh, it's common for them to be C students because yeah. they're not afraid of, of um, emergencies. Or they're not afraid yeah. of you know, uh, th- they don't panic. They kind of like, what next? It's like, well, well it's we like, you know, out. you know, a, a problem is presented in front of them that yeah. needs immediate action. They're not indecisive. Yeah. You know, yeah, so C that was, students can just say, this is what we're going to do. Right, yeah. wrong, or indifferent, they yeah. make a decision. Yeah, make a decision, right? And try to, try to make it the best out of the situation. Right. <laughs> yeah. So I was definitely that student. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so yeah, for sure. I will definitely say everybody needs an education, whether oh, that yeah. comes from college or not. Now, here's the thing for me. My education has been very lengthy and very expensive yeah, because yeah. 
that's the type of learner that I am. <laughs> you know what I mean? My education comes from grabbing it and looking at this end of a cord and that female and plug them in and seeing, seeing if it what works, happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and other people, they read from a book and they get yeah. the same education. That's not me. I can't apply it. 100% like for sure. Your third business. Yeah. What's that? So that's HydroTurf USA. Coming Hydro to a, a local town near you. <laughs> HydroTurf <laughs> USA. So um, what is it and what is what, what what is that? Yeah, so it started with uh, being a hydro seeding business, erosion control. So whenever I was approached about this business idea, I wasn't exactly sure what it was. To be honest, I had never really heard about it. I've, I'd seen the product around, mm -hmm. you know. But didn't know what it was I, when I really, you were seeing it. Exactly. And I didn't know what it was. I didn't know how it was produced, you know, how it was how it got there, how it got there. Yeah, exactly. So, <clears throat> you know, our startup costs were, you know, a little bit over $15,000. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and we've been open for a year and three months. And it's given us so many opportunities. We've met so many people. So we're about to start a sister company. Spray Foam USA, doing spray foam insulation. We got some specialty features in that that we went we went to Atlanta and got certified uh, to do some pretty cool things with that. With the uh, spray foam? With the spray foam, yeah. So it's it's kind of, uh, you know, it's, it's once again a niche in the spray foam industry, which is what we went to get trained on. And that's concrete lifting. And, you know, like I said, we went yeah, to... Yeah, that's something that's fascinating because, like, I, I never... Uh, you, you had told me about that. Yeah, yeah. And then so what's what's funny is, is like you told me about that. Yeah. And then um, I was laying in bed Like one night. Facebook pops it up on your phone or something? Well, there's that. But, I mean, <laughs> yeah, it's the, like um, Mark Zuckerberg heard me talk about it. <laughs> so I was laying in bed one night, yeah. and I was like, concrete leveling, insulation, yeah. you know, stuff like that. And then, like, there's, there's people doing it, yeah. you know what I mean? But I was like, that's pretty damn smart. You know, you have to provide a, a quality service, and it has to be – service that's valuable you know right. like people people um you know they like in the pressure washing business right like how would i how can i expect somebody to pay a thousand dollars to get their driveway washed you buy a pressure washer for that you buy a pressure washer or rent one it, or rent one right or or call the next guy yeah you know what i mean like there's there's many other options to get your driveway cleaned or right. even you know or even to the extent of like your roof clean right right like we won't get the roof clean yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? So the, the roof will not be getting cleaned. It's way too damn expensive, <laughs> right? So, um, But for, you know, these businesses, we've invested into assets that make our product valuable. You know, people wonder why they're not getting as much money as they would like to get. It's be, you got to provide a, a valuable service. My dad had a customer once that said, I just got to fuck everybody once. I don't need any repeat business. I mean, I guess, you know, and he did, he did very well. He, he screwed a lot of people, but who's that? Not, hopefully not grandpa. Yeah. No, he wasn't the one saying it. It was yeah, said yeah. to him. It was said to him. Thank yeah. God. Yeah. Yeah. Sweet. No. And so of course he's like, Oh, okay. Well, I know to cut my ties with your. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, you know, it's an unpleasant part of business. You're going to get screwed. Yeah. You know but I mean? you're going to get screwed in life. How? Yes. You know, what's really hilarious to me is, is every entrepreneurial book, seminar, motivational speech, whatever. A lot of them say the same thing. And it is entrepreneurs make a lot of money. They almost blow all of their money. Yeah. And the good ones usually come back stronger. Yeah. But that decline is almost always there. Oh yeah. And so when I, I would read this and it's a common theme between every, all the people that, you know, it's like, it's a common theme, right? Yeah. So I was like, that's not gonna be me. Yeah. I'm not gonna be irresponsible. I'm not irresponsible. Yeah, yeah. I do some silly shit. Yeah. But I'm like you, you I'm, I'm, not, covered. I, I'm not gonna I'm you not see gonna see that lose. coming, right? Huh? I said you could see that yeah, coming. That's what right. You I, I mean like, you know. And then when you're stuck holding the bag, it's like oh, Yeah. How did I get here? Yeah. Why did I let this happen? Yep. You know? And you know, for for me and uh, you know, I haven't I haven't shared this and I'm and I'm not going to right now. But um you know, I had, I had, a, a some unfortunate things happen in, uh, in my life. Um, but y you know, it, it, it's, it's, it kind of sucked because it was, um, you know, I had some health issues going on too. You yeah. know what I mean? It's like, okay. It well, was all at one time. That, that downhill decline yeah. isn't necessarily always going to be there because of your actions or your irresponsibility or anything like that. It could be something completely, uh, uh, 
yeah. Katrina could come wipe out your, your restaurant, your perfectly yeah. successful restaurant. You know what I mean? You will 10x your learning if you learn from other people's mistakes. And so, you know, I've, I've had a lot of mistakes be made around me. Mm-hmm. And that's not even just necessarily you. It's just every, <laughs> everywhere. Everywhere. Well, that's yeah, good to know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You are not the only fuck up. I, just, just know that, okay? Right? Everybody's got problems. But you learn from everybody else's mistakes. And then, like, hopefully, you know, I, you know it's, it's one thing to say it. It's another thing to actually learn from it, right? But I could say, you know, I saw what you went through. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I, I learned from that. I saw how it affected you. I saw how it affected your world. Yeah. And you know, I, I didn't want that to, ha- I don't, I don't want that to happen to me. And, and, if, and then to that point, right. Not only am I going to try to learn from your mistakes, right. But if I am in that position, I need to how learn to recover from, you, from it. Yeah, exactly. You learn yeah. how to recover from it because you know, everybody goes through ups and downs for sure. Absolutely. Um, and then also absolutely you're, you're a hundred percent right on the money. If, <sighs> You know, if you're not taking care of yourself, you're not going to be able to take care of yourself. You know, and especially in a setting like this, like I don't want us to come off like, like you know, to to viewers like we feel like maybe we've got it figured out. Figured out, right? you know. Oh, so it's a daily learn, man. It, exactly. And that's why, like I stated earlier, like I'm at the beginning of a very long road, you know. So even at this point, I I could come back on here in two years and say stuff completely different. Yeah, <laughs> you know absolutely. Saying, but, well, and I hope so. that you would say things different. Oh yeah. You know what you I know, mean? You because that learn. means you've, you know, you've, you've applied what it is that you've went through. Yeah. You know what I mean? You know, there's a conversation to be had in entrepreneurship when it comes to uh, support, right? So what kind of support system do you have? Um, and not just you, but everybody, it's a double edged sword. It could be both good and bad, you know? So if you have a spouse, that is financially supporting your journey of entrepreneurship, Mm -hmm. that could be a wonderful thing of support, or it could be um, enabling poor decision-making. 100%. You know what I mean? And that's for everybody to figure out on their own. You know, whenever I started, when I officially did my first business, you know, and all that, you know, hell, my son was... I don't know how old he was, seven? Yeah. You know what I mean? So it was like... Well, that's motivation for me. I'm like, I need to get things going so that I could be good whenever I do have kids. You know what I mean? I'm like, I don't, I'm glad I need to absorb the time I have and really put in the work with Mm -hmm. the time that I have while I don't have children, you know, because I want to, I want to be there for my kids. I want to do things with my kids. I don't want to just be constantly working all the time. So that was a real struggle for me is the working all the time part. Yeah. For anybody that's planning on going out on your own, I'm going to give you, Two cents worth of advice. Don't cash it all in one place. Yeah. If you're making 40 grand a year and you got a side hustle that's making you 40 grand a year yeah, and you decide to quit, you're going to make less money. 100%. The 40 grand that you're making on the side, first of all, you're making 80 grand a year. Yeah. That aside, the 40 grand that you're making on the side, once that becomes your full-time salary, you got taxes, you got expenses, you got a bunch of things that you don't really consider. And then you, you, you know, you just throw a number at it and you're like, Oh, I'm, I'm safe. I'm covered. That was my approach. You know, I was like, you know, uh, the numbers were a little bit higher. I, I, you know, I, I feel like, uh, I think it was like I tripled my salary the first year that I was out on my own, which m- meant really I broke even. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's like, like you, were, you know, the side you work that I was doing. Do yeah. yeah. The side work that I was doing and the, um, uh, my full-time job, you know, uh, provided X amount of money and then me tripling my full-time job salary out on my own led me about to where I was making whenever yeah. I left. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. And then, so of course I built on that and moved forward, but it's, that's something that is not often talked about. That was the motivation that I needed going out on your own is a terrifying thing when you're the sole breadwinner. Yeah, definitely. You know, I had a, you know, my son, I had a stepson, wife and dog. <laughs> yeah. And <laughs> the know, dog needs to eat. I'm saying. And then so like the only way you're going to get paid is what you are going to do clicking and clacking. You know, I was drawing blueprints at the yeah. time. So, um, that is what really drove a lot of those long hours, you know, cause I was like, I don't know when the next burst of work is going to come. Yeah. 
You know what I mean? I think that uh, I I don't I don't think that people give it enough credit, right? So I I don't think that people pay enough attention to it. To what? Uh, to creating a support system, mm-hmm. and or even this is a bold statement, but supporting your support system. Sure. Um, you know, so it's like that's a very uh, that's a very beautifully well put statement. What you just said, yeah, supporting your support system. Yeah. So I, I, you know, I think that a lot of people and something that I had to realize early in life. I'm glad I did, right? Because it 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 really helps me on a day to day basis. Is that there's got to be give where there's take, mm-hmm. you know? And so I can't just expect for, you know, everybody to just support me. Right. I, I don't ever support them. Right. It's like, sure. you know, I, the people that I care about, the people that care about me, um, you know, the reasons why is because I've helped, uh, cultivate a relationship with these people. Um, you know, they can come to me whenever they need things. And I can go to them whenever they, whenever I need things. Um, so yeah, I, I think that you know that's kind of something universal that I've seen in entrepreneurship, especially in, in this day and age, is that you know a lot of people just want a lot of things. Yes, you know a lot of people want a support system. A lot of people want to be healthy. A lot of people want money, right? But they don't want to work. They think that every stone, you know, like I, I really, I reference this a lot and, and I stand by it and you've got a great representation behind you. Every stone, you know, you, you got to lay every stone to build a wall and it, it is, it's small things, right? Things that you may not even understand are, are adding to your, to the opportunities that you'll receive later on down the line, uh, to, you know, add to your support system, right? There's a million different ways that you can interpret this, but you know, you can't be so selfish, right? You got to, under, you have to understand that if you want something, maybe you have to give a little bit. Sure. You know? Yeah. That's, that's, that's very reasonable. It should be very reasonable. Yeah. So my business partner in HydroTurf USA, right? He's a, he's a great business partner. Um, How old is he? Is he young? He just turned 23. Just turned 23. Is there, what, look, <clears throat> we come from the same city. Is there, <laughs> is there like a little pool of you guys or? It's pretty, <laughs> it's pretty much just him and I. <laughs> just, go, go to the first and the last. Yeah, huh? yeah, that's exactly right. Um, <laughs> he really helped me with, was that, you know, I used to set pretty high like standards. You know, I'd, I'd say some things that I couldn't necessarily stand behind. Mm. Um, Give me an example. It was a big thing for me early on. My, mind, you know, speed of service, right? I want sure. to. I want to have a quick turnaround. I want to. That sounds I, familiar. I'm like, I'll have you an estimate faster than anybody, <laughs> you know. And it's like, well, you know, at the time, that sounds great, and I did get a lot of work. I definitely learned a lot from it. But, you know, me now in business, I'm, I'm able to take a breath, and and there's a lot of things that I missed whenever saying, oh, yeah, yeah, I'll, yeah, let me, let me get that to you, you know, as soon as possible, mm-hmm. or I'll be there tomorrow morning. I caught myself being at jobs twice as long as I should have been, mm-hmm. um, just by simply, you know, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> so where do you think that came from? Were, was, were you intimidated? Uh, you know, I'm, because when you say it like that, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, yeah, you know, that's not only is that Southern charm, ladies, but that's also, you know, a, a for that's a, like that can be acknowledging like right and wrong, yeah, or, um, yeah. So that was that was my problem, right? Was like that can definitely acknowledge right and wrong, and at the time I did not see that. Yeah, being polite doesn't always mean I yield to what you're saying. Yeah, one hundred percent, right? So I'm reminded of this time. Um, I don't, do you remember when I, I used to build carports? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did one for, um, a family member as I was building this carport, there was like three or four people that stopped and said, Hey, how much you charge? Yeah. And I was like, are you serious? Uh, yeah. And I was, you know, I haven't, I haven't thought that far. Oh, I didn't. Well, I didn't, had no ambition of being, you know, building carports. You yeah. know what I mean, I was like, do you see how simple this is? You can't do it yourself. You know? Yeah. I'm only out here because they're old. You know I mean? <laughs> yeah, right. So, yeah. Exactly. So I, I felt that way a lot as well. Anyways, so this actually turned into something. I built a lot of carports just in that neighborhood. Yeah. Um, and that led off other things. But anyway, there is the, the yes, ma'am, no, ma'am reminds me of a, a carport that I built for this man. Yeah. He is a, an honorary old prick. Yeah. You know, and, um, hell, this was, this has been 20 years ago. 
he wanted a carport. I came out, I bid it. Uh, I gave him drawings, a color chart from the material supplier. The framing is always one color. Yeah. And then the skin or the tin or the metal panel, whatever you want to call it. Um, PBR, yeah, options. PBR panel to be specific. Uh, I gave him a color chart. You can choose anything that you want. You can, you can have this any color that you want is what I said. Yeah. At this point, this was like my third carport. And I had this all down to, I would dig the holes and set the posts Friday afternoon so that I didn't have to pull a permit. Yeah. Saturday, I would take me and a guy or me and two guys, me and, you know, whatever. And then we would build this whole, this whole thing. And then we were out, you know, that day. Yeah, that day. So it was like a full day Saturday and like an hour on the Friday and then I was out. Yeah. Quick money. Yeah. yeah. You know, we're about to, sh- we're about to head off and he, you know, he's standing there and he goes, what do you think? I, said, I think it looks great. And he goes, I think it would just look a lot better if it was white. Oh boy. And I said, you want me to paint it? And he goes, yeah, I think, I think we need to paint it. Oh man. And so he goes, I mean, don't you agree? Well, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, I do think that the uh, if we painted this white, it would you know it match the trim on your house. It would look it would look nice. Yeah. It took me. The thing was built. That's not when you. Yeah. That's not when you should paint. Well, I don't think you should paint. Well, ag- agreed. I'm not going to disagree here. <laughs> yeah. But so what 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 has happened? What's what's happening now is is like now I've got to tape off the roof. I've got to tape off the walls. I've got to do all this extra work. Yeah, all this extra. If work. I'd have known I was going to paint it. I wouldn't have put all the the metal the I skin buy white. Well, you can't the the framing the framing comes oh, red okay, ox. Okay, yeah. So, but I would have painted all that shit after I'd framed it. Yeah, you know what I mean. Whole different out of sequence thing. Old man, yes sir, no sir. Yeah, you're right, sir. I'll accommodate, sir. Sir, yeah. So, so, so it took you, me did for you paint it? ever. Hold on, it yeah. took me forever to paint this damn thing. Yeah, it was like. Cause I don't know shit about paint. Yeah. I, I build metal buildings and at this point I build carports. I draw yeah. blueprints. I don't know anything about paint. <laughs> you bet. I bought the wrong rollers. I bought the wrong everything. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. You right. know? And then so like I, I, now I'm just like, I'm way over. I'm not going to make any money on this job, Good. you know, but whatever, you know, learning experience. I go in to settle up with this Henri prick and I said, I had my invoice all nice and neat. And I said, here was the price for the, for the carport. Here's the price for, uh, you know, hauling off the dirt or whatever. Um, and then here's the price for the paint. I said, I didn't charge you for any of the extra stuff that I needed to paint this. I just ate all that. Yeah. And he goes, I'm not paying for that. He goes, you said I can have it any color I want. No, sir. That's not what I said. And he goes, it sure as hell is. You said I can have this any color I want. And I wanted white. And I said, Sir, I said, you can have this metal any color you want. Not the whole carport. Yeah. But it didn't matter. Yeah, this I, is I, what I, you I, said, right? I, I, I mean, I'm not going to, you know, I, I I felt like I was justified in just getting that last dig in. Yeah. And then, of course, he Henri's like, oh, I'm not paying. And I was like, I tell you what, you just pay me what you want. I said, this is my invoice. This is what I would charge to build what's out in your front yard. I said, if you want to pay me anything, you don't have to pay me anything. Yeah. I said, just write me a check if you want to for whatever it is that you want to write. Yeah. And then, so he goes, and then so his his final jab was, well, I'll write you a check for what we agreed to. Oh, man. Oh. You know what yeah. I mean? But my point is like to, to what you were saying about the yes sir, no sir. You know, it's like that doesn't always mean I agree that I'm in the wrong. Yeah. I'm just being respectful. <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, yeah, it was, it was a, it, it was, that's a, a great area for a lot of people. Well, yeah. And it was also a hell of a learning experience. Oh yeah. Communication is the key tool, I guess you would say to have in business. Uh, We're going to call this the lightning round. The lightning round. Pick a color, any color. Uh, any I like colors. blue. I'll you take like that. Blue? Yeah. I'll take that blue one. Okay. I, so I think that's the only one I haven't read or <laughs> not, not the tops, but the, you know, the, well, whatever there it's. I'm going to shuffle them. Okay, okay. So um, these are called pod decks, and it's a deck of cards with um, uh, just different... Juicy questions. Yeah, kind of. I mean, they all have different themes, you know? Yeah. So like the red is would you rather, the 
the green is what the heck. Okay, sweet. So this what, one. What's that one? This That's one, the one is I the seen. interview deck. Sometimes these are hit or miss. Sometimes. Okay. Sometimes they're for what I'm doing. I'm yeah. not using these right. Lightning okay. round, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. <clears throat> um, what is your most unusual talent? Oh man, these these kind of questions. Yeah, yeah. Well, hey, this is, you pick this color. Most unusual talent. To be able to maybe like make the ball roll, you know, to to get things going. That's right. Yeah, you know, just from from what I've been told, not a lot of people can, you know. I can attest to that. <laughs> yeah, not, a, not a lot of people can, uh, you know, get the ball rolling and, and get things going and, and make things happen. So I definitely I would say that that's a, a unique talent of mine. How much would somebody have to pay you for your little toe? For my little toe. Your little toe. Not the big toes. I would say low side, 50 grand. High side, 100. 50 or, grand, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> everything is for sale with Jared Setzer. It's, it's 50 gonna, grand's cheap for a toe, man. I don't know. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> low side, 50 grand. Sorry about that. Low side, 50 grand. That's probably a low, low, low number. But God, I, I hope know. so. <laughs> we may be looking at closer to a million. Like I said, scenarios definitely. Uh, you know, who are we talking to? Who's got the money? What is the worst pickup line you've ever heard or dished out you could catch flies with honey but you could catch more honeys being fly <laughs> See, did I've you just, ever I've use just, that one i've just been fly <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I haven't uh, needed the pickup lines too much um the worst pickup line i've ever heard never dished out is hey girls check me out <laughs> that, yeah that's all yeah that's all yeah. yeah that is a pretty shitty pickup line. oh yeah and god it was the times that i heard it oh, even shittier yeah <laughs> if you were reincarnated as a famous landmark a landmark which would it be maybe mount everest or something like that yeah. something badass <laughs> something cool um what happened on your worst ever date this girl and I, she weren't nece- we weren't necessarily like extremely serious. We was just you know a date, and um, my buddy Luke, we had talked about him a little bit, and he's in the music industry. So we, as as younger gentlemen at the time, you know, we're sixteen years old, seventeen years old, and we were always running around and just like we do in business, like we're we're putting our foot in doors that you know are open. Yeah. So we were always trying to, uh, you know, go to different concerts, meet different people, kind of put his name out there, and just the experience was awesome. Honestly, getting going backstage to to cool places and things like that. So one time we were at a, a concert for this gentleman by the name of Zane Williams, and we were backstage. He gave us backstage passes, right? Just like plastic cards. It's like a lifetime membership passes. Damn. You know, he straight up told us he's like, any show y'all go to, show him this pass. Let them know what's up, and y'all could come backstage. Y'all be just fine. So we're like, Psh. nice man. This is this is nice. It's royalty, you know. This will be great. <laughs> so he was playing at at Green Hall, a fairly popular place, and and we showed up with those passes, and they told us they said, yeah, these don't work here. <laughs> <laughs> and so we're like, oh well, shit. I guess we're leaving. I think the tickets were sold out, so we took off, and we had problems on the way home. She got out of the truck, bull. Just a bunch of noise, dude. But yeah, weird, funny day. How do you source your sales? What so you- I, I've got to be honest. I've tried everything. Okay. Right? So I, maybe not everything, but in my head, I've tried everything. Mm-hmm. And uh, he literally has a billboard on the side of the road. You got to have it. You know, I'm, I'm looking for more. If anybody <laughs> has places I can put a billboard up, let me know. Um, my 21 year old nephew has a billboard. With his business on it. Yeah. But yeah, so like how I was getting business back then was I was creating, you know, you helped me with this. I was printing flyers. Mm -hmm. You know, we printed thousands of flyers. And, uh, you know, I was going door to door, dropping them on every single person's door. And a lot of people really don't like that. Right. You know what (laughs) I mean? So, and I, and and I, I don't blame them. Um, but I can say the first job that I ever got that was over a thousand dollars came from, Dropping a flyer? flyer off at somebody's house. The first one for me, like I said, you, it's definitely trial and error. Mm-hmm. But I got a job from the job that I handed that flyer out to. Mm-hmm. You know, we we landed that job and we got an additional job. Mm-hmm. And I quit fucking handing out flyers. <laughs> Growing up and, and being in business from an early age, I was very hesitant. And I didn't have the confidence to, to walk into a job site 
and say, where's your boss? Let me talk to your boss. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, I, I'm going to go on a limb here, son, and say that most uh, adults don't have that confidence. Yeah, dude. So so what I found is, you know, doing that, um, you know, nine times out of ten, even if it doesn't work, to hell with it. That, that one time. Yeah. You know, it, also, it only takes one. Yeah, you know, we landed this job the other day with with a, a paving company here in town, mm-hmm. and uh, we had walked up to one of the job sites that uh, their employees were all working on. Mm-hmm. I, I walked up to one guy, said, "Hey, where's the where's y'all's project manager? Mm-hmm. You know, it looks like that y'all could use some of our our products here. You're definitely going to use somebody. I was just giving you our card, putting our name in the hat, letting you know we're here." You know, we're actually looking for people to do this line of work. It's not me who calls the shots. Here's my boss's number. So we called him and uh, talked to him for a little bit. Oh, yeah, this is great, guys. You know, thanks for thanks for reaching out. The you boss. know, the boss. Yeah, okay. you know, I'll, I'll keep you in mind. A week later, we showed up to their office and uh, knocked on the door. Hey, is, you know, so-and-so here? Yeah, he's here. Let me go get him for you. We went and sat down in the conference room, my business partner and I, completely just filled him in on everything that we do, how we could help him. And uh, he told us, he's like, you know, guys, he's like, you know, I'm, I'm surprised Joe walked in here. He said, there's not a lot of people that walk in here and say, let me talk to your boss. I want to, I want to, I want to <laughs> pitch him something. Um, so that was definitely, <clears throat> uh, it, it broke a barrier for me. He reached out to us a week later and we landed a $40,000 project with him. <laughs> oh, man. You know, to walk into somebody's you know, place a business and a month later have a signed contract for $40,000 worth of work as a business owner, that's quite relieving. And I want to have a service that this gentleman could look back on and say, you know what? I'm glad I gave them the opportunity rather than the person he was going to go with. He already had an estimate right. from the people that they were using before. Mm-hmm. You know, what? I'm going to give you all this, you all this opportunity and I want to make that worth his time. I right. want to provide him quality service Right there, what you just said, how you, um, what you just said, I want to make this worth this time. That is lost on a lot of entrepreneurs. Yeah. They forget that the core to their entrepreneurship is to provide value. Yeah. You know, and so for somebody to take a chance on you, that should be met with respect. Oh, 100%. And so I think you, you, you know, I think you definitely nailed it, you know, hit it out of the park here yeah. when you're saying, you know, you, you, you know, you don't want to let the guy down. Yeah. You know? you know, something that's very important, I think, is oftentimes you'll hear somebody say, um, uh, a liar and a thief go hand in hand. Yeah. You know what I mean? You yeah. usually can't have one without the other. If you're a liar, you're a thief. If you're a thief, you're a liar, right? Yep. Well, if you're providing quality, you know, you're also providing trust. 100%. You know what I mean? If your um, customer can see the quality and what it is that you're doing, they're going to trust you. Yeah. You know, with future endeavors or even just finishing that job. Yeah. You know, and, and one of the relationships that we built uh, was through one of our suppliers. Right. And this is, this just goes to show, you know, every time we go in here to our supplier, we, we make a conscious effort to stand out. We want to, you know, be extremely fair with our suppliers. We have conversations with them, take them out to dinner and stuff. And, you know, they, <laughs> They get a phone call that says, hey, you know, I need somebody that does hydro seating. And they call us every single time and say, we have a, a customer who's looking for somebody that could do hydro seating. Can y'all do it? And we get the work. And, you know, it's just, like I said, one thing leads to another. It's, it's about the quality of the relationships you, you build with these people. Um, we, we had a, the blessing and opportunity to be able to work with one of the largest companies here in town along the lines of our scope of work. Mm -hmm. And um, we built such a wonderful relationship with them from square one about our quality of service and the quality of our product that when there's issues, the owner of the company calls us and she says, hey, you know, this is what happened. It wasn't y'all's fault, but tell me whose it was. You know, tell me where, tell me where. Wow. Tell me where we went wrong. You know, like we're, we're out there working around all of their employees and they call us and say, Hey, look, tell us where we could better this service or tell it, tell us where we could better our, our product. And it's like, man, you know, it's, <clears throat> it's just that relationship. You feel the trust. You feel well, the yeah, relationship. Well, yeah, that's going to be a huge, uh, you got to take that with you, man. That's yeah. going to be a huge compliment. That's going to oh, be a it huge, is, yeah. 
um, you know, victory. Even, yeah. You know, parting words of wisdom. The big thing for me, the things that I, you know, really take a lot of pride in is quality. Yeah. Right. So I want everybody to focus on the quality of the person they are, the product they're selling, the business that they're creating. Uh, and also, you know, like I said, like I've say, stated multiple times, you know, don't be, don't be discouraged to chase opportunity. I appreciate you coming in, bud. Yeah. Hopefully this is one of many. Yes, uh, hopefully so.